The following program was produced by the Renaissance Center, creating television with passion and purpose. In partnership with the Tennessee Arts Commission, a grant-making agency working to provide access to the arts and participation opportunities in every community throughout Tennessee. This is accomplished in part by funds raised through the state's specialty and personalized license plate program. The arts add value to the lives of our citizens and make Tennessee a better place to live. Additional information can be found at tn.gov forward slash arts. Color. Shapes. Movement. Sound. Elements transformed by imagination into something we call art. It is an evolutionary realm of emotion with constantly changing boundaries that are always subject to creative license. Welcome to Creative License. I'm Barry Scott. Once again, we're about to take you on a journey across Tennessee where you will discover artists whose talent and ability often change not only their own lives, but the lives of those they inspire. Today we'll travel to Memphis, where an artist who took her childhood fascination with the motion and rhythms of nature now turns it into metallic designs that play in partnership with the wind and see how setting Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet in the frightening world of urban violence helped a young actress confront and deal with her past as a gang member. But first, imagine this. You have a child gifted with musical ability, yet you don't have the money for music lessons or even enough to buy an instrument. What do you do? For disadvantaged families in Knoxville, there is hope and also joy, as found at the Joy of Music School. Music instruments lay silent. Instruments not being used for the reason they were created, just as many children are not achieving their dreams to play music, because these instruments and the lessons to master them are simply unaffordable. But for a young violinist, this musical opportunity is a gift. I'm Kristen Tim. I'm homeschooled, and I love music in general. My mom had a violin uh, from, she took lessons about 10 years ago or more, and um, didn't wind up being able to continue. We weren't financially able to continue music lessons, and uh, that was something that was important to us. We were really going to try to figure out some way to get some of the children's lessons one way or another. The way they found was at the Joy of Music School in Knoxville. The Joy of Music School exists to provide disadvantaged and at-risk children free music lessons. Uh, these are kids who come from homes that can't afford to make up for the losses in the public school systems, where they're cutting the orchestra and the band and the choir. Kristen is actually excelling with the same violin her mother didn't get a chance to master. It's very exciting to me to uh, have watched her go from no experience at all to being able to play at the level that she's playing right now. The teachers I've had have definitely helped me uh, achieve things I never thought I would be able to. Feeding the music-hungry soul of Knoxville's disadvantaged children began years ago with the inspired dream of one man. The school started in 1998. It was founded by James Dick, who uh, a visionary philanthropist in Knoxville. He's a radio pioneer, actually. He started a radio station here and made a fortune, and, but was always known as a very, very generous man. And um, he had visited Nashville in the W.O. Smith Community Music School there and was inspired and wanted to take that model to Knoxville. Here you are, sir. 
His vision gave birth to a school where instruments are provided at no cost to families, and the lessons are taught by dedicated volunteer teachers willing to share their knowledge with students eager to learn. I decided last year to learn the Bach double after hearing it at a violin festival, and I knew it was way above my level, but I came in and asked my teacher, would she help me with it? And she said, oh, sure. Like, it was twinkle, twinkle, little star. Right. And it quits, correct? Tap that. What he's doing is he's duplicating the track four times because they were short little phrases. I think one of the coolest things about the fact that the teachers are not paid here is that you know you're going to get teachers that want to help students. They're not in it for themselves. You know, they're in it because they have a real desire to help these students. I want someone to raise their hand and tell me what you see in this picture right here. The sun, that's right, this is the sun, isn't it? So whenever we see a line through the sun like we have right here, you guys see that? We're going to say shining. They could okay, be doing so other things with their time and for them to choose to make themselves available to instruct our children and other people's children is just, um, I have a lot of respect for them and gratitude. You can just tell that, that it's sort of in their heart to want to wanna spread the gift of, of music. I started here uh, strictly taking piano lessons. But Breon Ewing's instructor learned he is proficient with a completely different kind of instrument. And then I told my piano teacher that I liked to sing as well. He came to me and we, I vocalized him and, you know, my inside was like, oh my gosh, this kid has a voice. And why should the shadows come? The experience that followed shows how the value of music goes far beyond the listener's ear. Some people might not know it, but I'm, I'm, I'm an introverted person, I'm a shy person, um, but it helped me to, you know, be able to speak to people, um, and, you know, it helps you to feel more confident about yourself in general, not, not just your talent, but yourself. Two, one, and... It's this kind of confidence that enabled him to win a place singing with the ensemble in a professional production of the musical Sweeney Todd. His newly discovered talent is also helping pay for his future. A young man who might have never had a chance to go to college has been awarded a four-year scholarship at the University of Tennessee. A lot of students you'll have to sit and talk to and sort of identify the thing that you're working on and try to help them to understand what it is and then how to achieve it. With Breon, a lot of those things are already there, and so it's just a matter of pressing a button, you know, and, and, and watching him go. They're developing a skill, they're developing a confidence as well alongside that. These things spill over into what they do every day, how they take care of themselves, how they take care of other people. They, they're confident, they realize they can do something. Music happens to be what they're doing here. I know, we gotta do it again though. Here we go, one, two, ready, go. Just seeing the eagerness on the faces of these kids here. You know, they're just so excited to be here. And you could just tell that, you know, they, they weren't being drugged by their parents to come, you know, take a lesson. It just, the kids that I saw the very first day just had this excitability in their faces about being here. And I just, that was very contagious. The stars fill the sky. Bringing music where there is silence. Placing instruments into a child's empty hands. Placing an encouraging music mentor into the life of a child who may have little reason to believe in himself. The Joy of Music School does it all. If I didn't have the joy of music here, I would likely be trying to figure out a way to get lessons. <laughs> Uh, because I enjoy music so much. It was an answer to a, it was an answer to prayer. Okay. Visit our website at creativelicensetv.com to learn more about the joy of music. One of the school's goals is to become a model school. They want to establish a program which other schools and communities around the country can imitate so that any child who loves music will have the chance to enjoy it.